London's vision is to reach young people all around the world, to connect them with the inspirational power of the Olympic Games. The Games of the 30th Olympiad are awarded to the city of London. Tim Jones first persuaded us in 2003 to help the London Olympic bid team work on possibly winning the Olympics for London. I thought I'd convince more people to back it than turned out to be the case, actually, because a lot of people came up to it at the end of the game and said, oh, now we see what you were talking about. I think Tim believed in it because, A, he loves sport, but I think he also had the vision to understand that perhaps something like this might just energise the firm, bring all of us together. You really need the best legal brains sitting behind, underpinning everything that you're doing. Never in a million years thought that I would be working on the London Olympics. We've never been involved in as complex a job as this. The Olympic Games touches so many different areas of law. First thing people say is that this has never been done before. Lawyers haven't gone there before. I mean, this is like new frontiers. Very fast paced, very exciting, meetings popping up all over the place. Having to advise on the spot about really quite technical employment issues. It's not only just saying yes or no from a legal point of view, it's coming up with creative solutions. We've had to continually reassess what it is that we need to achieve. Every day was different, every day involved something new. There was often political considerations. I don't think I've ever been involved in a project before which will have that scale of influence. The pressure's really on when you know that you're organising the greatest show on earth. We think about over 400 lawyers contributed to the various projects we helped LOCOG on. It was a mammoth undertaking for our people. I think we, at any one time we had 12 secondees in the legal department. I think for you know, creative lawyers, I think it was a terrific place to be, a terrific opportunity just to go to somewhere where you were really writing the rules. I was involved in the pitches for possible designs of the torch and then contracting with the designer of the torch to make sure that that iconic symbol of the games could be owned and used by London 2012 and then in the future by the International Olympic Committee. LOCOG needed to recruit 70,000 games maker volunteers and that basically had never been done before. The most challenging thing I've done here were the two Harbour Revision Orders. We did to take powers over the sea in Weymouth and Portland Harbour. And as a real estate lawyer, I'd done a lot of work taking rights over land, but I'd never thought about how that would apply to the sea. I've negotiated boat charter agreements with fishermen down in Weymouth. I've been negotiating recently opposite a brigadier in the army. So all walks of life, all types of organisation, you name it, we've been negotiating with them. Part of our preparation has been to test physically how these events are going to be taking place. For the cycling test event, we spent time wandering around Stratford looking for pretend ambush marketing scenarios. So we had people from here dressed up as Donald Duck and handing out leaflets. We've had to work with Heathrow to figure out how we're going to get 9 million spectators through Heathrow. Every challenge that comes through from the Olympics is new and it's novel. You have to be somebody who's willing to come up with an alternative solution. Do you really see that when you're down at Locop because you are part of the team and you're not in an ivory tower back in the office? One of the most exciting projects for me has been the ceremonies. A challenge for a city lawyer like myself because I've had to work very closely with artists to tell them what they can and can't do whilst facilitating their creative processes. So that has been a really exciting and rewarding experience for me. There was an enormous amount of contingency planning. We formed a crisis committee, which I was a member of, uh, which was standing by ready in case anything went wrong. And I'm happy to say we didn't have a single call throughout the Olympics or the Paralympics. That's how smoothly it went. One of the uh, other great things we did alongside the Olympics was sponsor some athletes. And we hit lucky actually. We found two fantastic people in Tim Robinson and Richard Whitehead. The journey to an Olympic Games is fraught with ups and downs and you can't do it all on your own. Freshfields were my first sponsor and the relationships grown and grown and grown all through the time we've, we've spent in partnership. I think for me one of the great moments of the Olympics was Richard Whitehead's 200 metre sprint. Richard Whitehead now 36 years old, 
here looking to take a gold medal for Great Britain. I knew when I was racing that, that within that 80,000 people were, were, were sponsors, were family and friends that had supported me on this journey. So away they go, the final of the men's T42, 200 metres, and Whitehead gets the slow start. When you saw me really pick up speed with about 120 metres to go, that was because of me feeding off the energy of the crowd. Australia has the lead, and it's Jackie Olvance for the United States, but here he comes and hits the front. It's going to be a goal for Great Britain, and a wonderful run. He crosses the line in 24.39. It's a new world record. To be able to deliver a race of that magnitude in front of so many fans is what you live for. His character has shone through in the way he raced that race and to win it in absolute style. There would have been many a, a, a tear in the eye, I suspect, when people saw him you know, power his way to, to, to gold. The charitable work we're doing for Fields in Trust and other organisations that are designed to make sure that the sporting legacy is maintained. Fields and Trust have been extremely lucky to be supported by Fresh Fields. I can't think of a charity that's had greater good fortune in its legal partner. Fresh Fields have agreed to act pro bono for the Herne Hill Velodrome Trust to make sure the venue, which is the only remaining 1948 Olympic venue still in use for its original purpose, has a continuation. We have responsibility to go back into our own communities, show our medals. Going to Haggerston Primary School, and that was a, a real eye-opener, a real experience. It was great to see how Freshfield supports that school. We've had both sponsored athletes who've been able to come in. Richard Whitehead provided an inspirational assembly and talked about how he had come to be a Paralympian. Kelly Holmes was able to come and talk to students, do an opening for us, bury a time capsule, and also meet with the year 10 student who was going to carry the torch on part of the Olympic relay. Now we're very much looking at tidying up outstanding issues, handing back venues. We've already had discussions with the Sochi 2014 organisers and the Rio 2016 organisers. No one firm has as we do, that whole understanding of what it is to deliver a project on this scale. I do hope people will look back on it as an extraordinary time in their own lives. I think all my friends are sick and tired of hearing me talk about the Olympics and the Paralympics and how amazing it was. You are creating an event that will impact on the world and, and create so many memories for so many people. You can watch it back and say, that was something I helped towards, which is a really great feeling. I feel very proud to have been involved. It's been an amazing experience. It's been a really unique opportunity. I think that's one of the most amazing things that has brought everyone together. You know, I was involved in that, even if it's just a small element, but, you know, I helped. And for me, Freshfields have really bought into the Paralympic spirit and the power of sport. You know, it's worked. You know, no one expected it to work like it has, and it's worked, and we were part of that, so that's fantastic. Having it here, and the fact that we've got our name attached to it, it's nothing better, absolutely nothing better. It's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, and we're really fortunate at Freshfields to be able to be a part of it.